Nikon D5600 Camera Review The Nikon D5600 is a compelling product. The addition of Wi-Fi, a tilting touchscreen, and reliable image quality make it one of the best at what it does on the market today. To fully understand the Nikon D5600, it's worth explaining Nikon's camera naming structure. The Fox series of cameras are designed to sit just above the 3 series, which are on the entry-level end of Nikon's lineup. The 5 series range sits just below the 7 series, which is aimed at semi-professional and enthusiast cameras rather than beginners. That being said, many of the features of the D5600 can be found across the range, with its performance matching up to many higher-priced products from Nikon and others. The Nikon D5600 was first launched in 2016, so five years on. We are writing this review through a slightly different lens, if you pardon the expression. The body of the camera itself is no spring chicken, but the fact that it's still listed in the lineup on Nikon's website and continues to be on sale across the world indicates its competitiveness, its unique position in the market, and its popularity amongst consumers. We'll not be assessing the Nikon D5600 for off-right quality of specifications, as understandably some of these have been superseded in recent years but instead for the benefits it can bring to the everyday beginner, enthusiast, or hobbyist photographer. The box itself is akin to pretty much all entry-level DSLR cameras from any manufacturer a small, inconspicuous unit with separate compartments for the kit lens, lens caps, the wall unit charger, a small handful of documents, and a Nikon-branded neck strap. Without the lens attached, the first thing that strikes you about the Nikon D5600 is its lack of size and bulk for an SLR camera. It feels almost comically light and diminutive and certainly rivals the brand and competitor's mirrorless SLR alternatives for weight and portability. That being said, it feels nice in the hand, largely thanks to a deep recess on the right of the camera which acts as a conventional SLR hand grip. Being so small, we also really like the proximity of all the controls and buttons to the right hand, and we found there was little issue in using our thumb to control each from a standard one-handed hold. One word of warning, however. Those with long sightedness may struggle. It's more muscle memory than anything for those used to a Nikon layout. But for those new to the brand, the icons are very small indeed and quite hard to read. Glasses at the ready. On the left hand side of the camera, there's an external microphone 3.5 mm jack, a mini USB cable for connecting the devices, and a remote shutter release input. There's also a little logo stating that the camera is Wi Fi and Bluetooth equipped standard affair these days but still welcome in a camera that's on the right side of $800 in 2021. On the other side of the camera, above the battery compartment, there's a standard SD card slot and an HDMI slot too for attaching to external screens. Again, a nice feature on a beginner-friendly unit. Turning our attention to the back of the camera, this is where in our opinion the Nikon D5600 comes into its own and starts to set itself apart from the d 3 range of cameras. The articulating touchscreen provides a 3.2-inch display with a 1,037,000 dot resolution, which is the same as the brand's previous incarnation. The D5500, it has however been upgraded software-wise and now provides a smoother and more seamless operation that includes a frame advance bar to quickly toggle through a number of different images at once. The resolution, picture quality, and sharpness of the touchscreen are excellent at all angles and even in bright, direct sunlight. The touch function, although potentially fiddly for larger hands, provides good response and feedback and allows you to quickly change settings or swipe through captures in playback mode. Delving into the Nikon D5600's menu operation, it's fairly standard Nikon fare, and most editable functions are easily found, but there are some quirks worth noting. The I button to the right of the camera provides access to edit image quality between JPG and REW formats, the focus and metering modes as well as the option to edit the ISO but it does require a bit of playing with and we'd have liked to have seen these functions more apparent within the existing button layout. The FN button to the left of the lens controls ISO speed by default, but you have to take a visit to a couple of submenus if you want to turn the auto ISO function on and off. The screen presents all exposure and image capture information by default, but isn't automatically editable via the touchscreen without pressing the I button slightly frustrating. There's room for improvement for more advanced camera users, and again we think the camera shows its age a bit here. But for more casual or beginner users, it won't be a problem. The menu system as a whole is self-explanatory and easy to find your way around. One key thing to cover in this review is Nikon SnapBridge system, the brand's connectivity option which allows a constant low-power Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection from the camera to a device such as a tablet or a smartphone. In fact, it's actually Nikon's only brand new addition functionality-wise to the D5600, and it works adequately, if not brilliantly, with the connection turned on. 
small resolution 2 megapixel copies of each capture are instantly transferred within a matter of seconds, which is a great feature for remotely reviewing frame or exposure selection. We did find that it had a somewhat harmful effect on battery life, but for instant access to your shots on a larger screen. It's an invaluable tool that we found we use more and more throughout our testing of the camera. Some have reported connectivity problems with this function, and we admit it can be a bit temperamental. But if you need straightforward speedy access to your images, SnapBridge works well and the files can also be stored in an album on a device for wider sharing. With the camera unboxed, it's a fairly straightforward process to attach the kit lens and start shooting straight away. As with many Nikon kit lenses, its default position is locked in so a little button on the side needs to be depressed to extend the lens into a shooting position. The kit lens itself is Nikon's own AFP 1855 and 3.55.6, which as far as a bundled package goes, really impressed us. Although its portability and lack of bulk are useful, we were actually a little concerned about its lack of weight. Our only criticism here is that it perhaps feels a little flimsy, cheap, and plasticky. But I guess that's what you get with a kit lens. If you're out camping, hiking, or photographing the night sky, we recommend investing in a well-padded camera bag to take the strain. Otherwise, we think the lens could get easily damaged and scuffed up.